What's up, Abe Kislevitz here. We are on a little sunset bike ride tonight. And I wanna share with you guys the best settings that you can be using in your Hero 10 to get the most out of your GoPros. I work for GoPro, so I've been using the camera for the past couple months. All of the information that I'm gonna share with you today comes straight from the source. So talking to engineers that built the cameras and those of us that have been out in the field shooting with it, there's a ton of different settings and modes in the camera and knowing when to use which of those settings in which applications is gonna make sure that you are getting the best quality out of your cameras. So stay tuned, we're gonna be talking about stabilization, shooting at night, POV, all of the different things that are gonna be exciting to understand. Thanks for tuning in. All right, we've got a full schedule for you today. First, we're gonna go through the ProTune setup. Next, we're gonna talk about aspect ratio and resolutions. Then we're gonna go into the meat of this video, which is the settings guide. And lastly, I'll touch on exposure control. Let's get started. To get into the video settings, we're gonna tap on the video settings pill at the bottom, and then tap on the pencil icon of the preset that we wanna adjust. Here's a pro tip for those of you that don't know, just tap and hold this video settings pill to jump directly into the video settings. So we'll be doing the ProTune setup first, and these are kind of the under the hood settings. What I show here is pretty much what I use all of the time with very few caveats, and I'll explain those as we go. One thing I do wanna note is that you will have to change these settings for all of the presets that you're setting up if you are setting up presets, so just keep that in mind. For bitrate, we're gonna go with high. For shutter, the camera does a great job on auto. EV comp is a setting that basically tells the camera to overexpose or underexpose. I like to keep mine on minus 0.5 just to make sure the camera doesn't overexpose. For white balance, the camera does a great job on auto, but you can set it to something specific based on your scene. ISO is the digital gain in the camera, so the higher it goes, the brighter your footage is going to be in low light, but also it's going to be noisier. I keep my ISO min at 100, and I keep my ISO max at 1600 because it helps with hypersmooth in low light. If you want to read more about this, I have a blog post of why hypersmooth requires higher ISOs to work without blurring. Just know that 1600 is a good happy medium between not too noisy, but helping hypersmooth enough in low light. I keep the sharpness in the camera at low at all times because it gives me the cleanest footage possible. I typically sharpen my footage in post, but also if you're trying to match GoPro footage to other camera sources, low is gonna help that be a seamless transition. Last but not least, we have the color profile and our options now are vibrant, natural, and flat. Vibrant being the former GoPro color. I prefer natural because it's just a little less punchy than vibrant. It helps with the highlights and the saturation in the camera, but it's also easy to color correct. For those that don't know, flat is actually a log curve, but it does take quite a bit of color correction knowledge to get that looking right. And I will shoot in flat if I'm in a tough situation where I have some intense highlights and shadows. So that's pretty much it for the ProTune settings. If you look at the left, I've highlighted the things that are not default in blue. All the rest come default out of the box, so not too much to change. I want to quickly talk about aspect ratio. GoPro films in both 16x9 and 4x3 where 4x3 is just capturing the entire sensor. If you look at the comparison, 4x3 just offers more view above and below that same 16x9 frame. The only downside is it's more taxing on the processor, so you can do higher frame rates in 16x9. Each of these modes contains different resolutions of varying sizes. Typically, the lower resolutions is where you get your high frame rates, which equates to better slow motion. The Hero 10 really bridges this gap by offering 120 frames per second in 4K. To give you a little size reference, here's 1080p compared to 2.7K, and then we move up to 4K, and finally 5.3K, which is almost twice as many pixels as 4K. On the other side of the spectrum, in 4.3, we have 2.7K 4.3, which is basically 2.7K but taller, 4K 4.3, which is 4K but taller and a little bit wider than the GoPro, and then 5K 4.3, which is a little bit narrower than 5.3K, but taller. The only crossover is the super view lens, which takes the full 4x3 view and squishes it down into a 16x9 frame. It then pinches the middle together, so it looks like it's the correct aspect ratio in the middle while stretching out the sides. 
You'll get the same view if you're filming in 4x3 in the wide lens, but SuperView conveniently packages it into a 16x9 frame. You'll pretty much always hear me recommend shooting in 4x3 over shooting in SuperView because you can do a lot more with the footage in post. There's plugins where you can actually recreate SuperView in Premiere, or if you're trying to crop your video for Instagram and a vertical crop, you have a lot more room to play with. Now that you have a background on frame sizes and we've also set up the ProTune settings, it's time to go through the full settings guide. I thought about all of the times that I change my GoPro settings depending on what I'm filming, and it ended up coming down to this list. I know it might be surprising that it's not based around skiing versus mountain biking or sports specific, but I'll go through all the categories and explain how it can apply to all of those different aspects. And then as I mentioned earlier, my ProTune settings pretty much don't change between all the different sports. I keep those constant, and we're just gonna be looking at resolution, lens, and stabilization. So this first category I would call travel, vlog, or documentary. It's basically where you're not gonna need any slow motion, but you're also not gonna need that 4-3 frame. For this category, I jump between the wide lens, the linear lens, and linear plus horizon leveling lens. New in the Hero 10, at 5.3K 30, the linear plus horizon leveling lens doesn't crop in any closer than the linear lens, which is huge. The great thing about the linear and linear plus horizon leveling lenses is they utilize all the extra room that they get from cropping to give you better stabilization. By filming in 5.3K 30 versus 60, it allows us to use Hypersmooth High, which is the best stabilization we can get at the widest field of view. Next on the list is POV, which is basically anything that's first person view that doesn't require slow motion. So it's similar to travel vlog in that I want high resolution, but I like to have the extra view that 4x3 gives me. So I'm gonna use 5K 4x3, which is a new mode in the Hero 10, and it is incredibly high resolution and extremely beautiful. I prefer the wide lens with this because I'm trying to get the widest view possible. In all 4x3 modes, we only have hypersmooth standard and boost, but boost crops in a lot, so I prefer standard. Another name for activity could be POV with slow motion. This is basically anytime you want to mount a GoPro where you get more view, so you're going to film in 4x3, but you also want slow motion. So I'm going to use 4K 4360, which is really high resolution, but also gives me the ability for 2x slow-mo. If I wanted to go more slow-mo, I could film in 2.7K 43120, but 4K 4360 is going to give us much better picture quality overall. Again, for this, I'm typically trying to have it as wide as possible, so I'm gonna use the wide lens. And then for hypersmooth, we're in standard. For cinematic, we're gonna take advantage where we get the highest resolution at 2x slow-mo. So that's 5.3K 60. For the lens, I like to shoot wide because I like to do my lens correction in post. I have a tutorial linked in the description below, but you could also use linear in this mode, which will give you better stabilization overall as you film. I wouldn't go to linear plus horizon leveling in this mode because at 5.3K 60, it's gonna crop in further than if you were just in linear. Because we're in a high power mode, 5.3K 60 does not have hypersmooth high, so we're in hypersmooth standard. Going down the list, I like to have a slow motion preset and we have the beautiful 4K 120. If you wanted to go even slower with the Hero 10, you can do 2.7K 240, but 4K 120 is gonna have significantly higher image quality. For the lens in 4K 120, I like to go with wide, but also linear does give you better stabilization as you film. And then for hypersmooth, we're in standard. I wouldn't go to boost because it does crop in, and I always like to retain the best image quality possible by keeping it as wide as possible. If you're shooting on an FPV drone, you can definitely get away with using the activity or cinematic presets I have listed here. But to get the best image quality with the best stabilization, I would recommend using Real Steady, which is a standalone application that stabilizes the footage based on the gyro and all of the data in the camera. When processing a clip through Real Steady, it's gonna take a 4.3 frame and crop it down to 16 by nine. So you definitely wanna be shooting in a 4.3 mode. For me, it's a toss up between 5K 4.3.30, which is incredibly high image quality, and 4K 4.3.60, which is gonna give you that 2X slow-mo. For the lens, I use wide, and then for stabilization, you're gonna to wanna to turn off Hypersmooth completely and let Real Steady do all of the stabilizing. Last but not least, if you scroll all the way down to ISO, this is one of the modes that I like to change ISO max to 100 because that gives us nice smooth motion blur when we're flying in the drones. 
This is one area you'll see a lot of people using ND filters to accentuate that blur even more. I'll just say you never wanna mix ND filters with an ISO max that's higher than 100. Otherwise, you're just forcing additional unnecessary noise into your image. Last but not least, we have low light. There are two modes in the Hero 10 that are tuned to be better with low light than others. And those are 4K 30 and 1080 60. I recommend 4K 30 because you're gonna get the added benefit of shooting in 30 FPS, which is gonna give you more light overall. And then 4K is just a higher resolution. It may be a little counterintuitive to not be filming in 5K, but you're actually gonna get better detail overall if you film in 4K 30, because that mode has more processing on it to deal with the noise reduction. For noise and image quality overall, I'd keep your lens at wide. And lastly, for the stabilization, since you're in 4K 30, you can enable HyperSmooth High. But for me, it's also a toss up between turning off HyperSmooth entirely at low light or using HyperSmooth with a higher ISO. What's nice about the Hero 10 is there's now an on-screen shortcut to turn off HyperSmooth entirely, so it's really quick to turn it on and off if you wanted to experiment. The last thing that I wanted to mention is locking your exposure. With everything that I've mentioned here, locking your exposure can add an additional layer of image quality that you didn't realize you were missing. Keeping a consistent exposure throughout your clips and videos will make your footage look that much more professional. The easiest way to do this is where you tap and hold on the rear display, spot meter will come up and you can move it around, tap it once, it'll lock it, and then accept the lock exposure. Just tap the lock at any point and it'll go away. All right, I know that was a ton of information. If you wanna go even deeper, I have a blog post that goes more in depth with all of the nuances of the different modes and settings in the Hero 10. There's a lot of information that I didn't even cover here, so check the link in the description below. I'm Abe Kislevitz. Subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends because we always like everyone shooting in the best quality. If you're watching this before December 1st, 2021, make sure you enter the GoPro Million Dollar Challenge where GoPro makes a highlight video out of your footage. And if you get selected in the final edit, you'll win an equal share of $1 million. The payout is usually 15 to $20,000 per person that makes it into the video. So you can use all of these tips and tricks that I've shared here to get some high quality videos. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.